Hello everybody, Rachel Jensen here with ECI Development. We are gonna get started in just a minute, but what I'm gonna ask you to do, and maybe you've been on our webinars before and you know exactly what to do, but please help us out by finding the Q&A section of the webinar that is going to be, or of the control panel, that is going to be where we go to during the webinar as any questions arise feel free to just type in your name, where it is you're calling in from. We are going to read those out loud. In addition, tonight I have Ivan Levy here with us. He is our sales and marketing manager. He's gonna be going through the questions and answer the questions, at least as they come in to the presentation, maybe answering them for you. Uh, but if we don't get to them, at least writtenly, then we're going to get this to them live. So feel free to find that Q&A section again, type in where it is that you're calling in from. And we're gonna get started in about a minute. I know sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get Zoom started. All right, so for those new folks that are coming in, all you have to do is find that Q&A section and we will type in where it is we are calling in from. And everybody can hear me, I'm hoping, right? Just type yes or no. I guess no, you wouldn't be able to hear me. Okay, perfect. It looks like, perfect. It looks like it's working. I know sometimes it gets a little jammed up there. All right. So we have a good number of folks on tonight. I see more coming on. So we have LJ in San Diego. We have Amanda in Raleigh, Nick in Charlotte, Elaine in Easton, PA. Yes, perfect. Thank you so much. Andy Pittman in Raleigh, North Carolina. Perfect. Thank you so much for letting me know that you can hear we have Houston, we have Denver, we have another one in New York, we have California, uh, we have someone in Connecticut. It looks like there's some more typing here. I'm perfect. So thank you again for joining us again. I see more people coming on. I know sometimes it takes a minute to get Zoom acclimated, but it looks like everybody more or less or a handful of you are able to find the Q&A section of the control panel. So what we're going to do is just get started here. Now we are recording the session, so we are gonna be sending you a copy afterward. And then if there's anything that we didn't cover that you want a little bit more information on, feel free to let us know that too afterwards and we'll get those details to you. So I'm really excited to talk about La Hacienda with you. It is an opportunity that at ECI Development you may not have heard much about. It is one of our newer projects and one that's a little bit different than our traditional focus, but one that is very much needed in the marketplace. So as I mentioned, my name is Rachel Jensen. I'm originally from New York, made my way down to Central America about eight years ago when I took an internship, internship position with ECI Development in Managua, Nicaragua. I was living in Managua, Nicaragua for about a year and a half and then was going back and forth to Belize quite frequently, maybe a month every other month, and ended up just really enjoying myself on Ambrokers Key. I found that I was looking forward more and more to going there and had friends and things to do when I got back. And it really just started to feel like home. So I eventually made the move over full time about Four or five years ago, I ended up purchasing a condo on the island, and today it is where I call home. Um, as you see there on the bio, or the little bio, I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for ECI Development. Recently joined Belize National Association of Realtors as a board member, which we're extremely excited about. And then, of course, I'm a global real estate investor as well. So while I did end up buying property throughout Central America, I ended up going that route first, which was a little, uh, a little, a little tricky at first, but then ended up buying in the United States and did realize that it is a bit of a different process. So we are here to answer those questions for you, especially if this is your first time looking at property overseas. You can uh, let us help you guide you through that because we do have the experience of working in various countries. So as I mentioned, Belize is home for me. And for those of you who are on the line, you may be looking at Belize from a lifestyle perspective. And if you are looking at Belize from a lifestyle perspective, it is very important to find a place that feels right to you, that feels like home. And you do that by exploring more and more, by talking to people, by getting engaged in the local community. And for me, what I was looking for was some place that had a lot of outdoorsy activities. I'm a very outdoorsy sort of person and looked for a country where I was able to have that nice weather, the tropical weather year round was able to have the jungles and the seas and, and have the beautiful scenery. If you're looking for an investment property, then you're probably looking for a place that doesn't really matter if you like it or not, but it's a place where people are going, where the masses are going. And we are certainly finding that that is Belize. 
So I do want to give you an update since the last webinar that we, uh, from when we spoke, Belize has officially announced that they're going to be reopening the borders August 15th, 2020. There are a few precautions that they are going to be putting in place. You do need to be able to show that you tested negative for COVID within 72 hours of traveling. And then there are a few other details that you need to do before you travel, when you get to the country, and then monitoring your health as you are in the country. But this is very exciting. Uh, this graph on the right hand side that you see uh, is, is from just a couple of days ago, but in total there have only been 24 confirmed cases in the country, which is just absolutely nominal when you're comparing it to other countries in the region. So we're very happy with how Belize has handled the spread of coronavirus. We're very, very happy that they are indeed reopening the international airport, allowing tourists to come in. But do note that there are going to be some extra precautions that are taken on your trip down. So we are ECI Development. We are a regional real estate development company based throughout the Latin American region. We're in Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, Belize, obviously, and looking at a few strategic acquisitions in Argentina, Chile, and Ecuador. And we've been working in Belize since 1998 when we first picked up a beachfront hotel. At that point, it was known as Playa Dora Hotel. The name changed to Exotic Key, and we've recently deconstructed Exotic Key Beach Resort to make room for the new Marriott Hotel. So we do have other projects within the country as well, uh, but today we're really going to be focusing on La Hacienda. And as I mentioned before, this is a property that's a little bit newer. We haven't really discussed it before, and I think that you're really going to enjoy what you see here. So just a few quick reasons about why Belize. I know we've covered this at length in the various Belize presentations. I highlighted some of the top three about why people are buying real estate in Belize, or at least coming down for a visit. The first one is easy access from North America. There are direct flights from many North American cities. I'm not going to list them all out, but very easy to get to the country. And it is getting easier as, there's more, as there are more people coming down, more direct flights, more cities that are being integrated into the directs with Belize City. In addition to that, English is the official language. So this makes it very, very easy when you're traveling, very easy as you're going through the real estate purchase. In addition to that, it is a common law country because it was formerly a British colony. They gained their independence in 1981. So it feels very familiar to us. And I think for those of us who are from North America, we really, North America, we really do enjoy that comfort. And then, of course, there's affordable Caribbean real estate. I think this is a big reason why many people are looking in Belize. Your dollar just simply stretches a lot further, especially if you are comparing these sort of properties to other Caribbean jurisdictions like the Bahamas or Bermuda or Aruba, where, where beachfront or at least property that's close to the water tends to be a lot more expensive than many of us are prepared to spend. Belize still offers affordable real estate at this point. It is certainly going up. I, and when I first started eight, nine, Nine years ago, I can say that prices were definitely lower, but I still don't think that they've gotten to the point where they plateaued, uh, like countries like Costa Rica, for example. In Pacific Costa Rica, you find that the prices there have really stabilized. They've, they've plateaued. They've hit a point where they're not really appreciating a tremendous amount more because it's already been in the market place for 25, 30 years. But we are finding that there is still opportunities for appreciation in Belize. And then of course the increasing tours. And now this year may be a little bit wonky because of everything that's going on when you look at the stats. But what's really important to note is that whenever you're looking for a country, especially when you're looking for an investment, it's important to look at what the tourism rates look like because as a place becomes more popular, more people find out about it, more people are going down for vacation and ultimately there's more real estate, real estate transactions that are happening. Where we're going to focus today is on Ambergris Key, and Ambergris Key produces 70% of the tourism revenue for the entire country. So 70% of the tourism revenue for the entire country of Belize comes from this little island up here of Ambergris Key. Ambergris Key is about 26 miles long, one mile wide at its widest point. We are the, the biggest key, the largest key off of the coast of Belize's mainland. And that really is where a lot of the tourism is focused around. And one of the big reasons for that is because Ambergris Key parallels the Belize Barrier Reef. And if you can follow my cursor right over here, this is where the Belize Barrier Reef is. And when you look out from the coast of Ambergris, you can look out and you'll see the, the, the waves from the reef breaking right there. It truly is phenomenal. This is one of the main reasons why Ambergris Key has become more popular over the years than the other places within Belize, because the reef is right there. So we have the divers, the snorkelers, the fishermen, uh, the people who are coming out for some simple R&R &R and like kayaking or, or stand up paddleboard. 
there's a lot of activity that you can do right there off of the coast. So for that reason, specifically, we've seen that a lot of folks are coming out to Ambergris Key, but then we also have the people who just wanna get away from life for a while and they wanna drive around in a golf cart and live a much simpler life. And you are able to find that on Ambergris Key. But always bear this in mind when you're looking for that investment property, understanding where it is the tourism is being, the tour, tourism revenue is being generated from is extremely important. And I would always recommend that as a place to look at. So just a little bit of a quick clarification. Ambergris Key is the island and then San Pedro is the town on the island. And sometimes those two names are used synonymously. Some people refer to the entire island as San Pedro, but everything truly is focused around this pink area down here at the bottom part of the island called San Pedro. And, and Madonna wrote a song called La Isla Bonita, which is about Ambergris Key. It was in the late 80s that that came out. So if you hear that on the radio or maybe just play it on Spotify or iTunes after this, she wrote that, wrote that song about Ambergris Key, which I think is pretty neat. But San Pedro, again, is the primary town. There are other neighborhoods around San Pedro. We're going to talk about one specifically called San Pablo, but San Pedro is, is really the heart of everything. So when we make references to the primary town or to the downtown area, it is going to be in reference to San Pedro. So like we mentioned before, there are a lot of water activities right off the coast of Amber, Ambergris Key, and this has been a big reason why a lot of people have been attracted to Ambergris. And from the 70s, even people were coming to the island. And those are more of the adventure travelers, people who didn't mind where they were sleeping. They primarily came down to dive, were in the water all day long, out on the boat fishing. Um, but now it really has become more of a mainstream tourism market. So we see that people are still coming down for the fishing and the diving and the snorkeling and the water activities and kayaking. There's just a tremendous amount that you can do out there. And it is considered the Caribbean water. And it's nice to know that the water typically stays anywhere from about 81 to 83 degrees year round. So it is very warm. If you're a diver, you don't need a, a wetsuit in order to go down and really enjoy the colors of the reef. If you're not necessarily a water bug, there are still many activities for you to participate on the land. Uh, Lobster Fest is one of my favorite festivals that will be happening next uh, June. And what, at that point, what we do is in, reintroduce lobster into the menu. So from February to June, lobster season is closed. And then in June, we reopen lobster season. It's a lot of fun. People dress up like lobsters. There's lobster food everywhere. We have block parties and live music. It's a really fun time to come down and experience the island. Uh, wine Divine, it's one of the local wine and cheese shops. They have Friday socials. Costa Maya is a beauty pageant where we bring in uh, representatives from the different Central American countries. And then, of course, one of my favorite bars is Crazy Canucks. Uh, they're located on site of where the future Marriott is going to be, and they have a fun activity called Sunday Fun Day, in addition to a lot of other activities happening as well. So if you're planning on coming down to the island and you want to stay with us at, at Grand Bayman Gardens, that's the, the best western property we talked about a couple of weeks ago, or La Hacienda, which is where we're going to talk about today, just feel free to shoot us a note, info at ecidevelopment.com. Mention that you've been on the webinars with us, and we'll be able to give you some great rates. Now, um, I just covered a lot about Belize in a very short period of time. Typically, I can talk for about Belize for hours. And so what we ended up doing was hosting a webinar a few weeks ago about Belize 101, which is more general about the country, the different parts of Belize, the different districts, what to do when you're in the country. If you'd like to get a copy of that recording, just email us there, info at ecidevelopment.com. And in the subject line, just write Belize 101 and we'll know exactly what you're talking about. But info at ecidevelopment.com, that'll tell you more about the country. And we also talk about the real estate process, ownership of real estate in Belize there as well, and some myths and misconceptions and what you should know as a foreigner buying real estate in the country. So with that being said, we are going to jump directly into the opportunity here and talk about La Hacienda condominiums. And to give you a little bit of a background of La Hacienda, um, we're gonna start with the fact that these canal front condos were built in 2010. Um, that was obviously during the, the, the time of the recession, the 2008 to 2012 recession, the HOA ended up going defunct. And so ECI ended up acquiring six out of the 10 condos in 2019. In total, we're gonna be offering five for sale, but at this point we are only offering two. We're holding on to the other three, keeping them in the rental market. Uh, but there will be two that we talk about specifically during this opportunity. Now, typically as developers, what we tend to do is we go and we find land, raw land, we build on the raw land, and then that's what we offer. So this was a little bit different for us. And we wanted to make sure that we did extensive due diligence 
prior to purchasing this property to acquiring the property because we wanted to make sure that it upheld our normal standards that we're looking for when we build property. So building to hurricane standards is very, uh, a very important subject matter to us and we wanted to make sure La Hacienda had the same. We also wanted to make sure that there were amenities, that it was close to things, that it was easy enough to get to. Uh, and they did end up checking up all the boxes, but there was a little bit of TLC that needed to be done to the building because as much as we may not like paying monthly homeowners association um, uh, dues, it is important that it, something is being paid in order to maintain the building. And so I think that's something that's really important for you to remember as you're looking at property is what does it cost? What does it actually cost to maintain the property that I'm buying? And of course, we all prefer lower APs, but you want to make sure that what you're actually paying is sufficient enough to maintain the building and the property. So even if it's a little bit higher, maybe than you expected, just know that that is HOA money. And I can't speak for every HOA out there, but at least within ECI, that is money that belongs to the homeowners association, gets put in a reserve if it's not being used. And that way we have the funds there in order to continue maintaining the property. So we are currently in the process of giving some TLC to the building. It's looking fantastic. For those of you who've been to this property before, you may not recognize it in some of the future pictures, but it really is, is looking phenomenal. And the structure, the actual structure of the building was in very, very good shape, but it wasn't painted for years. There was no landscaping that was maintained. The pool ended up um, being emptied. So there were just a lot of things that we needed to do to get the building back to normal. And the picture that you see there on the right hand side is indeed from the rooftop. We will be redoing the rooftop at some point as well for all the owners to enjoy the sunset right there. But every now and again, you'll catch some of my team members and me up there with a, a bottle of wine and some cheese and just watching the sun go down. It truly is a spectacular place on the island to be watching the sunset. So we ended up painting the building. It's this beautiful powder blue right now. And when we acquired the building, it was about 17 different shades of orange and pink and some red in there. And it was just a bit of a mess. So we ended up painting the building. It looks really, really new, refreshed at this point. And like I said, you can see that it's still structurally very good, but it just needed a little bit of love. In addition to that, the pool, I don't know if, if you've ever, you know, I, I always think of, um, I don't remember the name of the show, but it was a cartoon and there were skateboarders and they'd be skateboarding in the, in the empty pools in California or Hawaii or wherever it was taking place. And so the pool there wasn't maintained. There was no HOA money to put towards maintenance of the pool. So we fixed up the pool. Uh, it is being properly maintained right now. We have an HOA president who lives there at Hacienda. He's out there skimming the pool every now and again, uh, but it just really is a great place to relax. The next project that we're going to be working on is updating the railings. And um, from there, you can see in the pictures a little bit. There are definitely some updates there, but that is next in line as we continue to update the building. So where is Hacienda located? Uh, this is a map zooming in more in San Pedro and then the surrounding area. So up, if you can follow my cursor up here in the northern part, uh, this is the northern part of San Pedro. There's the bridge right over here. If you've been to the island before, you may have encountered the bridge, but the bridge will take you up north, and we're about 15 minutes from that location. We're about 10 minutes into the heart of the downtown San Pedro area, and then from there, <clears throat> excuse me, are the Hacienda condos. So you see Grand Bayman is indicated right over here. It's about five minutes from Grand Bayman from where our future Marriott Hotel is up here as well. So it is quite close to our other properties. It's very, very easy to get to. If you're looking for the location from the Caribbean beach, it's about a five minute walk to get from La Hacienda to the beach. Now, as we zoom in a little bit more and you go to the top screenshot up here, you'll see La Hacienda is located there on the canals and also on the bay side of the island. So you do have that waterfront view from all of the balconies. In addition to that, San Pablo, I describe it as an area that's up and coming. It's what we would probably consider a gentrified area in the US. And what you tend to find in this neighborhood is expats who want more land and don't necessarily wanna pay those beachfront premiums for it. They're planning to live on the island for X number of years or X months out of the year. They want more privacy. They don't necessarily wanna be by all of the tourists. So you do find a lot of single family homes. You find a lot of expats as well. And then you also tend to find wealthier Belizeans in this area too. So it's an area that when you drive in, I think you'll notice there are construction projects happening. There are three other construction projects that are uh, currently underway. Some of that's more local housing or expat housing. Um, but this is an area that I think is, is most certainly on the rise. 
Now, just right around the area over here, there is quite a bit. We have Brooklyn Brothers, uh, which is a fantastic bagel place. I don't know any, any Northeasters, on, Northeasterners on the line, but it is very close to what the bagels that you get in New York. In addition to that, there are, there's Key Coffee Roasting Company, go pick up a fresh coffee. And then there are a handful of supermarkets uh, around the area as well, probably about a five minute walk to get to marinas and super buy. Uh, Hidden Treasure is a great restaurant right there in the area. And then the baker, which is obviously a bakery is right there in the neighborhood as well. So it is quite close to everything, but what I, what I recommend you thinking about is as this being an opportunity to really serve expats who are living in the area or perhaps you if you're looking for a little bit more privacy and don't want to be in the heart of the tourists. Now right now I mentioned to you there are 10 condos at Hacienda and who's already staying there or who already owns at Hacienda are working expats. Uh, that tends to be our primary demographic. Uh, we also, so they're there for more of the long term. We also have more of those budget conscious expats. When you're coming down to Belize and you're planning to live there, most of us are coming down on a set budget. This is what we want to spend. Uh, now there certainly are the people who have an unlimited budget and they're probably buying the beachfront homes and living there. But when you're coming down and you have a limited amount of money in social security or you're working there on the island, you know, you're making a, a Belizean income, maybe a little bit better than that. So you want to be more budget friendly, more, more budget conscious as you're looking for a place. Uh, in addition to that, we have put these on Airbnb before and we have had more of those budget travelers and people who are coming not just for three, four, five days, but people who are coming for two, three, four weeks and are looking for more of an, more of an affordable place to stay. And that's what you tend to find at Hacienda and that has performed very well in the rental market. Already on site, we talked about some of these amenities, the pool. Uh, in addition to that, all of the condos do have canal and pool views from the balcony. There's complimentary golf cart parking because yes, we do get around a golf cart. There's also a private dock with boat moorings for the owners. So we have a limited number of slips that are available for owners that have boats. And if you do have a boat, you can let us know and put it there on the mooring. In addition to that, one of the future projects will be the rooftop terrace. We talked, I showed you the picture before from when we went up there with a couple of my coworkers, watch the sunset go down, a beautiful place to watch that. And then of course it is rental friendly, both long-term and nightly as well. So we are gonna be talking about two of the condos specifically that are being offered in this round. And they're very affordable. When you look at it, under $180,000 plus the closing cost for a two bed, two bath on the island. That's pretty difficult. It's pretty difficult to find a two bed, two bath in a maintained building um, that's in a good location that has amenities. So this is kind of an anomaly for the island. In total, when you include the balcony and the interior space, it's about 882 square feet. And something I mentioned before, but I think it is really a unique selling point for this specific property is that it has private balconies that all face the canals and the sunset. So you do have that water view. You also have that pool view. In addition, uh, because it really is designed more so for the long-term renters, there are washer dryers. The master bedrooms have walk-in closets. Uh, there's split ACs, and then there's also that full kitchen there. So again, really geared more so towards that long-term renter. We do have financing available up to 70%. In addition to that, HOA is super affordable. It's only $125 a month. And what that does is it keeps the building looking fresh, maintains the building. Anything that's not spent is put in the reserve and used for a future project. And then property tax, uh, really affordable again, about $475 per year. That's per year, not per month, uh, $475 per year. I do want to make a quick statement that all of the dollars in here are in US dollars. So uh, if you're thinking Belize, you might've been on other webinars with me before, uh, where I tell you when you're in Belize, think in Belize dollars. But on these webinars, when it comes to real estate, we are pricing everything in US. So just something to bear in mind there. So it's a very efficient use of space. Two bedroom, two bath, has that washer dryer for convenience, has the balcony overlooking the pool and the canals and the sunset as well. So what we are doing, we are offering two condos out of the five that we own. Like I mentioned, we're putting our, we have our others in the rental market at this point, um, but there are two that we are offering in this round. So they are being offered for 179.9, but we're offering $10,000 off over these, for these two condos, specifically 169.9. Uh, and that first one is uh, condo number one. It's on the first floor. It's a corner unit. So there are a couple of extra windows in there. I know some folks are specifically looking for the corner units. And then condo number seven, that's on the second floor. 
And what's really cool about that condo, especially if you are a boater, is that it comes with a free sailboat and a free mooring spot there on the dock. So you can just walk directly out from your condo, hop on your sailboat, go explore around. And the picture that you see here on the bottom uh, the middle, that's from one of our, our trips that we took when we uh, took a sailboat out from Hacienda and you see the beautiful waters right there. You're just able to jump right out uh, and, and be there in the Caribbean Bay, which is really quite fascinating. After we finish the project, so I mentioned to you the railings is next. Once the railings are complete, there is going to be a 5% price hike. 5% appreciation for the remaining condos that are not sold at that point. So this is just something to bear in mind. We're still a few months away from that price hike, but if you would like to save the $10,000, do consider the condo number one or condo number seven. And of course, our team can talk to you a little bit more specifically about which ones they think are the best and why they think that's the best. In addition to that, there is financing available, but if you are considering financing at that 70%, just note that it is going to stay at 179.9, but that's still a great opportunity because it's before the, the price increase after the TLC is included. One more point I do wanna make is that the price does not include the 8% stamp tax. If you were on the previous sessions, you remember that we talked about a stamp tax in Belize. It's the title transfer fee that is due from the government of, that's due by the government of Belize to you as the buyer and that is an 8% tax that you do pay. So you add 8% onto these, uh, but at the end of the day, there are very, very low ongoing fees. As we saw, only $125 a month for HOA and only $475 US per year for property taxes. So again, very, very affordable. And to find these sort of numbers for two beds in a, a well-maintained property is, is very, very challenging, but we saw the opportunity there like what we saw and wanted to be able to offer it to our marketplace. So with that being said, I do wanna talk about the performance for a little bit. The numbers here are pretty conservative, but at the end of the day, if you're looking for a two bedroom, two bath place that the, the property is gonna pay for itself, you're gonna net so a few thousand dollars at the end of the day, this would be a really great option for you. So you can play around with the numbers a little bit, but we base this long-term rental on $950 a month uh, being rented for 12 months. Typically, like I mentioned, people are coming in for longer periods of time. Uh, many of our long-term rentals are signing on for two, three years at a time. Um, so just something to bear in mind as you're penning out your numbers there. But you can see at the end of the day, after all of the expenses are paid, it comes out to about 4.42% net. Again, I know that's conservative. I know some of us are like, oh, I want that 15% cash on cash. And I, and I get it. But if you're looking for a rental place in a beautiful location just blocks from the beach where it's paying for itself and you're still bringing home it's not too bad seventy five hundred dollars at the end of the day i would recommend bring hacienda now if you want a copy of the performa this is just for the long-term rentals uh, nightly rentals it's a little bit more than that but again these are more budget accommodations nightly rentals are about anywhere from 99 dollars to about 149 dollars a night uh, so maybe a little bit higher than that percentage wise there are a little bit more fees uh like electricity and utilities when you're long-term renting, but if you would like a copy of the Performa, just email us there, info at ecidevelopment.com, and we'll send both the long-term and the nightly over to you. So again, very, I think it's a very affordable opportunity. You may even... ...there on the island. So this I know is one of our quicker presentations, um, but I do want to say thank you for joining us. I know now that the borders are opening, hopefully more of you are planning to come down. Uh, we are planning to do a trip in either November or, or December of this year. Uh, it's when it's starting to get a little bit chillier there in the States and Canada. So we'll let you know what those dates look like. But in the meantime, we would like to uh, give you the free copy of the 15 must-dos on Ambergris Key. And this is actually gonna be emailed to you directly right after the webinar. Um, it might come in two, three hours after the webinar. Sometimes it takes some time for it to process, but this will be sent in that email there. And make sure when you come down, we're gonna, we're gonna check off a lot of those boxes on our tour, but it would be something quite neat to do. There are a couple more in there for you to do on your own. So make sure that you do review that too. And just as a recap, we have the two bed, two bath, condo number one, condo number seven, that we're offering cash buyers for $10,000 off. The perk for condo number one, it's a corner unit. There are a couple extra windows, so you get some more light in there. And it's also convenient for your renters. They don't have to go up flights of stairs. 
And then there's also condo number seven. This is on the second floor. For, so for those of you who like to be up a little bit, and it does come with that free sailboat, which is really quite neat. So if you would like more information about this, the, the contact information for us is there at the top of the screen, info at ecidevelopment.com. Uh, and just let us know what's on your mind. Our team is happy to go through the questions with you and to really highlight um, some more about the property if perhaps you haven't had the chance to visit before. But like I said, I think this is a really unique opportunity, especially for those who are looking for something affordable who maybe want to come down with family at some point or just really want to serve this, this big hole in the marketplace. But right now we just don't really see much of this. And for those of you who look at opportunity and like to be on the, the, for, the forefront of the appreciation and the gentrifying areas, I, I really would recommend reaching out to us. So with that, let me see what time we have over here. With that, we have about five, 10 minutes to go through some questions. I just want to thank Ivan. I know that you are filtering through some of them. So you may have gotten some of those questions answered and it looked like you did, which is fantastic. So I'm gonna just go through some of those questions again and then that way we can answer them there. Um, that way we can answer them there for everybody to hear in case they haven't heard it. So again, Ivan, thank you so much for answering these as we were talking. Uh, Andy said, why Amber is key? Is there so much tourism? Why not Placencia? And Ivan, you are spot on there. Uh, when you said that we're not working on the mainland, but Ambergris Key continues to be a top destination because it's where a lot of people are going for those water activities. It's also, there's also a lot to do within the area. So whether you come with kids or you come with, with uh, older parents or you just come as a, a honeymoon a couple, there's just a lot of activities for you to participate in. And the reef, I mean, the reef is really the number one answer there. And um, the diving and the fishing and the snorkeling, you can be on the land be out there in the water in five minutes diving. It, it truly is remarkable. Placencia, you do need to travel a little bit more to get to those destinations, to get out to the reef. So people who are looking for more of convenience tend to be there on the island. And we drive golf carts, so it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to be out there. And you know, at the end of the day, when we as a development company are looking for new locations, we are looking for where we think that we're gonna have um, people interested. We want to be working where the people are going. And I think many investors are probably looking for the same thing. And so we are working with a couple of different branded hotels. We have the Best Western, we have the Marriott. Uh, we did both of those presentations, I think last week and then the week before. So if you'd like more information about why they're coming, make sure that you're tuning into those presentations. But at the end of the day, Andy, I think a lot of it comes down to the reef. Uh, which is literally just right there. And the fact that it's a safe place, it's comfortable, it's easy enough to get to. It's a 15 minute puddle jumper ride from the airport to the island. And it's it's convenient. It's very, very convenient. Um, a Vipol said, can we rent through your program? Yes, absolutely. You, you can come down, you can rent from, from nightly rentals. You can do long-term rentals, whichever is the most convenient for you. Um, Mont, good question there is what size and depth of the pool? So the pool at Hacienda is 10 feet deep at its maximum. Fantastic. Thank you. During rental periods, when are busy seasons? Really great question here. And I'm glad that you asked that. So high season typically starts around November, uh, November, December, but Thanksgiving, U.S. Thanksgiving is when we start to see the tourism rise. People have vacation at that point and it's getting colder in the north. So they're looking to get away on a tropical vacation. And then it typically runs through about May, June and July, we've seen higher spikes in tourism. And again, this year's a little off, but historically we've seen higher spikes in tourism June, July um, than the other months, because what we're seeing now with Southwest coming down is that more people are bringing their families and they're waiting for the kids to get out of school. So they'll be coming down June, July, and then August, September, October are definitely, um, not as popular. That is when we consider slow season. It's when a handful of businesses will close their shops and take a break for a little bit of time. It's typically rainier than other times of the year. So if you're trying to plan your next trip down, I would recommend coming in November or December so that you miss that rain. But that typically is that typically is considered slow season and there just may not be as much up and operating. Amanda, I missed the part where you said airports are opening. When is that again? August 15th is going to be this year, 2020, is when the airports are opening. There's a, like, I think, a, I believe it is a five phase opening um, process, but you just need to make sure that you get a COVID test 
within 72 hours of traveling. And then you'll be able to show them when you get there that you did get this test. And I believe they're going to run another quick test on you just to make sure you don't have a fever or showing any symptoms. And then they'll be able to monitor how you're feeling through an app. And, and uh, I'll send you, Amanda, I'll send you the little, it was like one, two, three, four, the steps of what you need to do before you come down and while you're in country. And I think that that would be super helpful as well. But we are planning to do a discovery tour in November, December, uh, end of this year. So we'll keep you posted on the dates as well. All right. Um, Vipul asked any pictures of the inside of the condos. Yes, we can certainly email those over to you. I don't think we have all of them on the, the screen here, but we can certainly email those over to you. Yes, Jacqueline, really great question. Does Belize grow its own fruits and veggies? And the answer to that is yes. And they are some of the most delicious tropical fruits that you will find. Uh, you'll find papaya, banana, watermelon, pineapple, um, tomatoes. What else is there? Cucumber. I mean, just a tremendous amount that is being grown there. It's, a lot of it is on the mainland. Uh, the Mennonites run a big part of the produce industry and it's fresh, it's organic, and it, it just truly is delicious. And when you come to the island, what you find are all these fruit stands. It's, it's fun, they're all colorful, and you just see tons of fruit out. And so everything that you get there is fresh. So you, you kind of make it, make it fun to go to the fruit stand every few days, pick up fresh produce. Kathy asks, how old is the building? The building was built in 2010. And then there are pictures of the surrounding buildings. I apologize, we don't have it in the webinar here, but we can certainly email them over to you, uh, Kathy. And then you asked if you're involved in the autograph. So no, we're not uh, involved in the autograph. We're doing the trademark Belize Marriott residences and resorts. So we're the Red M Marriott uh, located about half a mile closer to town. Um, but we're happy to get you information on the Belize Marriott residences and resort. You can either live in them full time or you can put them in the Marriott rental program. Uh, Vipal asks, how do the agents, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name there correctly. I apologize if I'm not but how do you, the agents, market the property for rental? There are various ways that we market it. Uh, online travel agencies are one of the big ones with the um, Expedia, Booking.com, Airbnb. Uh, we also tend to do a lot of work with our sister hotels. So Best Western will be one, Marriott will be one, where if people are looking for something specific, like Marriott's not gonna have long-term rentals there. I mean, it, they may, but it's gonna be at average daily rate. Mar uh, rates, which is four to five hundred dollars a night times 30. So I don't 30 days. So I don't necessarily think people will be staying there, but people will come through those outlets. They'll be coming through. Um, <clears throat> they'll be coming through our websites. They'll be coming from Airbnb, uh, coming from the Best Western website. So there are a lot of different ways for us to capture the rentals. Very good. Very good question. Square feet Marseille is about 886, including the balcony. Uh, Lucy said, can you drive to Corozal by car? I uh, have a friend who lives there. So uh, you're not able to drive to Corozal by car. We do have, we're on an island, but, and there's no bridge or anything like that, but you are able to take a boat over to Corozal and then you'll be able to see your friend who lives there, which is really quite neat. And then Andy asked if we're north of the bridge. Uh, no, we are located south of the bridge where this specific property is located about three quarters of a mile south of the, the San Pedro downtown area, um, but we are, all of our four properties are located within south of the bridge. Kathy Butler said, is the furniture included? Yes, Kathy, really great question. Thank you for asking that the furniture is included. And it's just, it's just the minimal furniture that you need in order to get a rental, uh, to get long-term rentals and nightly rentals. If you wanna spiff it up, you're more than welcome to do that. That'd be a fun business project to come down to Belize and, and pick out some extras for your condo there, but everything, uh, is included at this point. So yes, the only thing that's not included on, on the prices there, the 169.9 or the 179.9 are the closing costs. And that is an additional 8%. So do bear that in mind. If either of these condos are of interest to you, just shoot us an email, info at ecidevelopment.com. We can send you those details. I know a few of you asked for pictures. Uh, just let us know and we can send those over to you. I see Marseille, you asked for the pictures. Yeah, we'll certainly get those over to you as well. I know that there were a couple throughout the presentation for the two bedrooms. So we'll, we will get that information over to you. And with that, it looks like we're just nearing uh, the 40 minute mark. So what I'm gonna do again, just shoot us an email as anything pops into mind. You're gonna be getting a, a follow-up email after this with a copy of the recording. And in addition to that, it is going to have a link to more information about Hacienda. And I don't believe, just for you to bear in mind, I don't believe in the brochure that you'll have in the follow-up email. It mentions the discounted price. So just take that $10,000 off if you're looking at the 179.9 number. 
Uh, and then in addition to that, you are going to get that 15, the guide of the 15 must do things when on Amber Grist Key. So thank you everybody for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. I think this is a phenomenal opportunity for those of you who think ahead and like to serve a market that's very, very underserved at the point. At this point, we're happy to send the details over to you, more information. And again, you'll get the copy of the recording. So thank you, everybody. Have a really great evening and we'll be in touch or afternoon or morning, wherever in the world you may be calling in from. Bye-bye.